So Winter of Anime 2019 is officially underway. So many new anime are coming out this week. And so to start off today, let's talk about Dororo. I think that's how you say it. The first episode just aired today, and it's something that when I was reading the synopsis of it on what I will watch for, you know, Winter of Anime 2019, it looked to me like this could be a potential dark horse or something that could stand out and be something that could be uh, on top of everything else. Now, there is a lot of competition, obviously, from this anime season. We have Mob Psycho, we have Tate no Yusha, we have The Promised Neverland, etc., etc. There's a lot of series that this, you know, series Dororo is going to have to compete with, but even then, though, I still think that this series had a lot of potential when I read the summary. Now, after watching the first episode, I will say this. This is definitely a different story. Like, it's not something I'm used to when it comes to anime like the main premise is that the MC has had everything stolen from it I'm not talking about material possessions I'm not talking about like books money clothing home I'm not talking about that I'm talking about how the main character has legit lost everything that would make you human he's lost his skin he's lost his limbs he's lost his eyes he's lost his ability to speak hear probably smell he has lost every single thing and this boy has had to grow up for you know a long time by himself he's really probably not had many people in his life because he was abandoned by his father that threw him away so the premise is very dark this series is definitely not for the light-hearted people that want something very chill or relaxing or something that just brings you joy or smiles this is not that type of series it's a series that's uh very dark has a tone to it that is different, and it is something, obviously, that I am interested in, because I do like dark, gritty stories, and this is definitely right up my alley. So, to get right into it, what is it technically about? So, from what you can see from the start of the episode, the main Mo character's father, his land wasn't prosperous at all. It was in famine, the land was doing poorly, a lot of people were dying, war was happening, just overall, it wasn't a good situation for the country. And so, the leader of the country, he decided to just, you know, get rid of Buddha, like, completely disregard his faith for Buddha, and ran up to the statues, like the Hall of Hell, and he prayed to these 12 demons to be able to save his land. And when he did this, he's like, look, I no longer need Buddha, I want you to do anything in your power to make sure my land prospers, and I have power, wealth, and all that. That's basically what the MC's father did. But he's like, as for the deal, I'll give up anything you desire, anything you want. Obviously... The demons accepted this, but the thing he gave up was his very son. His son had everything stripped away from him, which is what I said earlier on in this video. Skin, fingers, hands, everything was stripped away. It was a miracle that the boy did not die instantly. And the only reason why I think the boy did not die was because of the Buddha statue that, you know, got hit by the lightning. It was stated right after the scene when the boy was introduced that the statue also got struck by lightning and the head was completely gone. I'm assuming in that moment... Buddha protected the child where the child's life didn't get completely taken and that's why the child was able to live and thanks to the luck of Buddha and all that is why the child was even able to find you know someone to probably survive or something or the luck carried him on to where he did not die instantly regardless though basically the father gave up everything like he gave up his son to be able to have power and for his land could have prosperity but that's the thing though when hit with him doing this, obviously, it's going to come at a cost. I feel like it's more than just giving up his son, because when he made a deal with these demons, he didn't just say, like, oh, take one thing, take anything you want. So, for all we know, the demons legit could take anything they want. They possibly are ruling over the country, doing whatever they want, because of how, you know, the father allowed to do whatever he, they wanted. Like, he's like, hey, you know, I'll make a deal with you, just give me prosperity and keep the country in check, but... Take whatever you want. I feel like the demons are just running rampant, which would explain why the demon was going crazy at the end of the episode. And also after the deal was struck, why this like creature spawned up and started to attack the woman that was putting, you know, the child, the MC, into the boat. But however, you know, the story goes or whatever happens, I will say though that for the first episode, it has this draw to it. Like to where you're drawn to it and you want to know more. There isn't really 
a whole lot of th many things going on in this first episode. Like, the premise is set up, obviously, with the MC, and you do get the objective, which I will talk about in a second, but overall, it's a very simple start, and it keeps this mystery about it towards the very end that makes you just question and want more. And I think this is a type of series that is going to be really good just week after week, sitting down watching it, and just appreciating the slow, gradual build-up it has. I do think that this series might benefit more from binge watching than anything else. I mean, after watching this first episode, it seems like binge watching it would be ideal, but obviously I want to do, you know, weekly reviews, so that's, you know, out of the equation for the time being. So let's talk about the main objective. So, as we know, the MC's father gave up everything, or his child, and the MC, which, you know, has everything taken away from him, at the end he fights this demon. And this demon is taken down, obviously, and when the demon's taken down, this mask that's on the MC just shakes off, and you see how his, you know, lack of skin, it grows skin back out, and the man has, like, a face again. And what you can get from that quick little moment is that if the MC kills the demons, like, probably one of the 12 demons or whatever, he gains back what they took from him. So that's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's where the plot is going, that the MC is going to have to go out of his way and annihilate all individual demons to be able to gain back what he once was, his humanity itself. And so as he slowly, gradually goes through the story and he takes up more demons, he'll become more and more human where he might gain a voice, he might gain hearing, he might gain sight. It'll be a very interesting experience because you've got to remember that our main character, he has never had any, like, you know, I guess sense of touch, hearing, probably tasting or seeing he's never had any of this so you got to imagine someone that probably gains back their eyesight or their arms or legs whatever and are able to do what they want you gotta imagine what that would mean to someone how much that would be just a state of shock to your body that you have all this back and so many new experiences you can have i am looking forward to this series and seeing if it will dive into that part when it comes to our mc now, we also have another character that is introduced, this little boy, which, by the way, I love the voice acting. The voice acting is just top-notch, and I want more of the character. Even though I, it's obvious that the little boy isn't, like, the main main, probably, you know, like I said, the one that had everything taken from him is the MC. The little boy is still nice. He's a quirky little kid, and I do want more of him because I think that... Overall, the reason why the kid is so quirky or interesting or talkative is because it, you know, balances out the dark tone of the MC to where, you know, the MC never talks, never hears, never tastes anything or whatever. You know, the little kid balances that out, which I think is perfect for this story because if the kid was also very depressed or didn't do much, then it would make for a very dark, depressing story, and some people might just drop it because they just don't want to see so much sadness, which is one of the reasons why in Berserk, Puck was introduced because Puck is like the only state of like joy or happiness in the story at the beginning and when everything else is looking bleak or dark Puck is someone to kind of lighten the mood up and stuff like this does need to be added in series from time to time even the darkest of series need to have some form of light-hearted nature to it even Game of Thrones in some ways has this so yeah but um was Dororo a good first episode? Yeah, I think it was a solid first episode, something I do want to continue watching, obviously. I want to know where the story is going to go. I have been told that apparently the story has been concluded already, like the manga is done or whatever. So if that is the case, that means we will probably get a conclusive ending for this series, which makes me very happy because honestly, if there's one thing I hate about watching anime or just getting into new anime, is watching it and not having a proper conclusion. Because even though there's a lot of good series that come out each individual anime season, a lot of times, or often, very often actually, even if a series is good, it doesn't get a season two, or it really never gets a conclusion for its story. It's very rare to see a story get a conclusion, even if it's already finished, because sometimes it's may mainly just there maybe to advertise the original source. And so I do hope that Studio Mappa goes out of their way and adapts the entire story, and they actually, you know, just make, you know, the original source readers happy they, they may you know make them really happy and that they adapt it properly and people are just excited and you know want to watch it week after week but yeah that's uh pretty much about it it's a great episode what more um definitely something to watch on monday and yeah let me know your thoughts if you enjoy my content you know please subscribe if you like this video please leave a like and if you want to get notified for whenever i upload a video please click the bell icon down below because for some reason even if you click the subscribe button you don't always get notified for whenever a video is uploaded so if you do want to get notified like i said click that bell icon and this goes 
for everyone, not just me, but everyone on YouTube. So even if you don't do it for me and you don't care about me at all, at least do it for the YouTubers you care about because it does help us out a lot. And so with that, I love you guys. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Happy New Year's. Chibi out.